Welcome, y'all, to the Wake the Farm Up Maintaining Ground podcast. Check out our other shows. See where we're going. Right now, we're getting down with Theo Katzman. We love waking the farm up. We love waking the farm up. Yeah, that's what we like to hear, a lot of voices, you know. Check this out. We're down at the Soul Patch Summer Camp, May 28th, 2023. Theo Katzman of Wolfpack with Andy the Elf and Liz Virgo. Support the show. Check the links in the footnotes on whatever podcast stream you like. Do something nice for yourself. Go to our website. See what's new. Take an ice bath and learn some Wim Hof. Leave a review for the show. Please. Oh, check out our live shows. Come and be part of one of them. Come check it out and be part of the pod squad. Share the show with friends. Have a fun time. Get serious. And focused. And, no, seriously, have fun. Check out our Instagram. It's easy to find. I wake the farm up, which is my personal, Andy the Elves, wake the farm up. But, you know, the Instagram for the show is maintaining ground, but it's got one of those little lower flat lines in it or something. So just go to wake the farm up. And you'll see right there in the bio a link to the Instagram for the show, Maintaining Ground Podcast. You know, it's one of the best podcasts and the best reasons for having the internet out there, you know? That's what they say. We're the jam band of podcasts. We'd be freestyling, improv. This is all on the spot. We're going to be welcoming up Theo Kassman on the stage here in a moment. In the meantime, keep in touch and take care of each other. Enjoy the show. Wake the farm up. Much love. Get in the woods. Go out in the forest. Come on. This is May 28th, 2023, in the Soul Patch at Summer Camp Music Festival. Recorded live for you. Start by uh, screaming love the count around this the top bar lungs in the count of three, right? So I'm gonna count to three, and we're all just gonna shout love the top bar lungs, alright? One, two, three, love! <laughs> alright, so this is Wake the Farm Up with Andy the Elf, and today we are featuring Theo Kasman of Volpec. So uh, let's welcome these guys to the stage. Feel free to sit, stand. Welcome. 
What do you guys think, everybody? Wake the farm up. We're down here in the Soul Patch Summer Camp 2023. We're graced here. Everybody give a hand to Theo Katzman on the stage Yeah. Here. Wake the farm up. So, you know, I'm Andy the Elf, the host of the Wake the Farm Up podcast. We've been making recordings throughout the uh, weekend here at Summer Camp Music Festival. And they're all fun things in the theme of jam band music stuff and cosmic fun humor. You know, we had a good morning look, the morning look at things show this morning. So we even had a Sunday morning show here. That was like good comedy show. It was fun. There was all kinds of. It was like that moment of the day where the wooks in the morning early bird people are connecting. It's the most bizarre time of the day. The That's conversations. <laughs> And up here in the middle here, we have Liz Virgo, the cultivator host here at the Wake the Farm Up. Hey! Once again, Theo Katzman, Wolfpack. All right, all right. Thanks for having me, Andy. Yes. Yeah. Appreciate you. We yeah. love waking the farm up. Yeah. Know? All day long. All day. Yeah. And, then, and then, you know, I think at this point of the festival, like, this farm is woke up. Right? Right? Let's, let's get, can, you, can I get all of you guys just for a moment just to like shock us like with how loud you can say wake the farm up at us? That's yeah, pretty good for a Sunday. A, yeah, yeah. Like that's it. like Friday energy right there. Yeah, like these it. campers are ready. So, so one of the things that we're really excited, I'm just going to jump right in into let's it do with it. you, Theo, here. Yeah, man. We got this amazing thing I've, I've really been inspired in music and my creations by nature and the sounds of nature the feels and textures the way that just the finding the puzzle of how we as people and can exist in it integrating ourselves in it being our nature it's like we're not separate from nature we're our nature and amen finding that though as a higher calling in which you're creating and finding your art and channeling it I know that some of you may be aware but maybe not all of you are aware that a lot of Theo's music comes from the inspiration of music and I've heard some of your poetry describing how that inspires can you share some of that yeah, totally. go into that well I haven't really talked a lot about um, specifically the last the last decade I was mostly living in Los Angeles California which is a place I'm sure some of you have heard of Okay, <laughs> but I spent the previous one, decade in the great state of Michigan, which is right next door. And uh, can you show us on? Uh, it's a theme in the show yeah, for yeah. Michigan. And well, I went to school at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor, Michigan, which is like there, but okay, it's I like spent down a lot at of, the bottom of the thumb for the yeah, audio listeners. South, Southeast Michigan, but then I uh, yeah, hey. and I toured a lot with. Uh, with that guy right there, Brendan Andes. What's up, baby? All right. <laughs> and um, so, over the over that decade, I was because of the because of Michigan, I was able to get a, across the whole state, kind of up up more there and up here, and even into the Upper Peninsula. And uh, I got to see just the great beauty that is the state of Michigan and the Great Lakes region. And uh, I've lot, got to, a chance to really build a lot of real community throughout the state and the region. And uh, by the way, that's really what music is for me, is building community and getting to make connections with people. I love people. I love all of you. Wake so the farm up. Yeah. Maintaining yep, yep. ground. I, yeah, I do like music. Ground. I will be clear. But uh, I also, I really like music because it's my way to connect with people. And so over that decade in my 20s, I, I, I really was mostly in, in Michigan and, and the Midwest. And then I was in L.A. for most of the next decade. And so during the pandemic, um, I took a road trip in my van, went back to Michigan. I just felt called to get back in the water and just like ground myself in nature. Fresh water, baby. Fresh water. Exactly. And so I went on this road trip and I ended up um, having this series of events happen where I had written down uh, the criteria that I would for a dream property for me to have a wilderness retreat style recording studio. And I wanted a certain amount of land, I wanted a house, I wanted a barn, and I wanted there to be water running through the property, and I wanted it to be surrounded on three sides by state land so that it would be very unlikely for anybody to be able to build on it. 
And I thought to myself, like, well, this is basically impossible. You know, this is an impo- this is an absurd bar to set, but this is really what I what I would want. So I'll just write it down. And um, a couple people had told me, like, write it down. You know, that's how you manifest. And I'm like, okay, sure, whatever. And then I'm like, you know what? Why not? I'll just write it down. It's been written. Yeah, and I wrote it down, and I shit you not. I hope I can say that. Too late. Oh, you're good. You you're good. Can, shit you not. Uh, Within within a couple weeks, that property was sent to me. Uh, my fr- a friend of mine just sent me that property that me- that met actually exceeded all the criteria. Right. And uh, I was I was jaw dropped. Like I have to I have to do this. Um, so I ended up I, I was fortunate enough to be able to buy this property, and basically spent the pandemic turning it into my uh the first first iteration of my dream little recording situation it's a very humble situation but in terms of the gear and in terms of the studio element but the ambiance what is what is not humble about it and what is profound is this nature this nature piece and i and because i lived in la for a decade i knew that you know la has a thousand studios and it's got the best studios in the world for recording music but one of the things it doesn't have is the ability to like really drop in and ground yourself and and eliminate distractions because in the big cities you know the the strength of the city is that there's people everywhere yep. but that's yep. that leads to my next theme which is like the strength and the weakness are always the same so like i'm extremely talkative you know so it's good to give me a microphone to do a podcast but if the goal is for me to save my voice I have a tremendous weakness, which is I talk all the fucking time. You, well, know? you just need some other people around whose tongues are sprung and they're just ready to go. And there we go. And up and just going to have so much to say. I mean, if you crack exactly. the door open with some people into nature, I mean, nature, the endless bounds of like exploration. There's so much there in that realm that we don't even know yet. Science don't even know. Correct. There's so much woo-woo out there that's been proven by science. It's fascinating. Yeah. Yes, know? exactly. So... So this nature piece, um, I started, I started uh, bringing people out and just saying, like, trust me, come out. What I can guarantee you about my studio is that there's no distractions at all. You are going to, there's nowhere to go get coffee. I got coffee at the house. There's nowhere to go get lunch. I got lunch at the house. You're not going to go run out to get lunch and run into 10 people and then end up having this, like, oh, hey, how long are you in town? Oh, cool, man. Oh, L.A. Oh, New York. Oh, right. Oh, Chicago. Oh, cool. L.A. Oh, cool. L.A. Oh, New York. Oh, New York. Oh, Austin. That's what a lot of the conversations are in the big cities. You yeah, know, I've, I've heard of those cities. Yeah. Before. Yeah. I've heard of people going to them and whatnot. And I totally get that. I can relate. You know, it's amazing. It's like, yeah, people go to cities. But like, so like what you're saying is your place is the kind of place that if you want a coffee, the nearest coffee shops, like a 45 minute drive kind yeah, of thing. 45 minute drive yeah, to, for a hip coffee. Actually, more like an hour for a hip coffee. I can get you a decent coffee in 30 minutes, but I have a good shit in my house, so I'll make you one there. But the, the real moral of the story is that um, bringing people into, into the raw nature environment is the quickest way to the, for them to ground themselves. And this might sound funny, but like if you want to ground yourself, you need ground. Right. And like nature is the actual ground, so it is the most grounding thing. <laughs> Put your feet on the ground. Um, so within about a day, everybody that comes to the to the property is like, "Holy shit!" Okay, and then it's like, you know, there's cold water running through the uh, through the property, which we could talk a little bit about the cold water immersion that I've gotten into. But once you do that cool. and you're in the woods, it's really just. It's really quick that you drop into this, and then it's like, all right, let's go tell the truth, you know? Let's go tell the truth to the microphone. Let's turn the microphones on and tell the truth. So to me, the nature piece is, uh, is, the, is the main thing. Um, that's, that's what this is, this is really about, is being about able to get artists into nature and then just get their most unobstructed, unadulterated, real shit they have to say. That's, that's what I want to capture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me too. Me too. Look, at that's what we're doing right now. We're that's just right. chopping it up here with the real shit. This is the real shit, unedited. Yeah. Un- well, you know, we didn't write this out ahead of time. We're writing this right now. That's, that's right. I, 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 no, I mean, actually, I don't know if you've noticed. Like a lot of shows, they're like, 
Your artists are like lip singing a lot. <laughs> this whole thing is lip synced. I hope we don't fuck it up because pre-scripted. We, we recorded this like last last month. Actually, we're this is all AI. Actually, yeah. in fact, none of us are. Yeah, and, none of us are even here right now. Yeah, it's ancestral intelligence just programmed this moment here. Mm-hmm. But so yeah, we've we've brought we've made three albums at this studio. We made uh, my new solo record called "Be the Wheel." Yeah. And uh, I see some of y'all with the Ten Good Songs hat. Bless you. This is the uh, this is yes. the most. I'm so proud of this merch item. Look at that. I'm like yes, finally. Hell yeah, me too. I, and I also got over that. It's like, oh, can I wear my own shirt? It's like hell yeah, dude. I paid for it. I ordered three thousand of these. I might as well wear one. So anyway, we made my album there. We made an album. Hey, real quick. Yes. On the Ten Good Songs, you ever thought about turning it up to eleven? Well, I actually, it's funny you should say that, I have 11 songs on my new record, so everybody's Bam! like, they're like, which is, is the bad one? I'm like, no, it's not that. <laughs> they're all good. It's, a, it's more of a, it's more of a, a manifesto. It's like a, a mission is to write 10 good songs and put them on a, an album. So we made, we made Be the, uh, Be the Wheel album there. We also made an album that I produced for one of my favorite artists who's also a Michigan artist, May Earlywine. Yeah. All right, May Earlywine. She's incredible, and uh, her album is called The Real Thing. We did that at the at the house as well. And then we did the Schwitz album, the new Wolfpack album there. Incredible, yeah. And I'm sorry to uh, burst this bubble if anybody thought that that was a real sauna. <laughs> it, uh, people come, when they come into the house, they're like, oh, shit, wait, 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 this is not... Wait, this is the sauna, but it's not a sauna. I'm like, yeah, no, it's a wood panel room. It's a living room. It's It's a living room with a with a fog machine, baby. But uh, you know, it's art. Sometimes people are upset about. They're like, I thought it was. I'm like, I know, but that's magic tricks. You know, we're artists. Man, I would just like look around really slowly and be like, sauna. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So we did those three records there, and you know, I I love all those albums. I think. Judging from the applause, it sounds like you guys have maybe heard them and maybe even enjoyed them. Yeah. Yeah. So, so for me, the proof is, you know, is in the pudding in terms of like, it's it's wonderful that everybody seems to have enjoyed those, and also, the artists who are making the records are loving making the records, and so the process is enjoyable for the artists, and to me, that's that's kind of like. The win-win is, you know, we've all we've all done things in whatever line of work we do where we're really toiling and struggling and fighting the elements of what we're doing, and we might make something great. I've definitely had that happen in my life, but I'm starting to realize, like, the more you can make this a really joyful, enjoyable thing, then you really set the stage to be able to express the whole realm of human emotion and expression. And so well, that yeah. comes back to the fact that you know, we have this this nature location where we're recording, and um, our mutual friend Chelsea Coy. Um, yeah, and a, Chelsea yeah, you know Coy. Chelsea. Yeah, Chelsea's an incredible Chelsea. cook, chef, and uh, I had her um, come in and cook for the band on the Wolfpack album and my album, and you know, it completely that sets the stage. It's like where we have whole natural foods we're eating. Um, a lot of it is as you know local produce, which we're blessed to have in spades in northern Michigan. Wake yes. the farm up, you know. Yes. Like, yeah, I, I just want to like chop it in here with yeah, you. Yeah, chop like, on take in. A couple breaths. Like you're, ama- you have so much. See, to I'm, say. Tom, I'm saying a lot of shit. Here we go. So much to share. That's Cut me we're... off. Yeah, and so, you're good because Andy has taken a vow of talking for yeah. the year. So, <laughs> yeah. met yeah, so me, much. Andy. So you know, my sister-in-law about six months ago took a vow of silence for a year. Wow. And on that last day, I was like, well, you know what? I'm going to take a vow of talking this year. I've been a quiet guy. I've spent a lot of time listening. You know, it's nice to, like, be able to tune in and listen when you're a talker. I can feel you do that, you know? Like, being a musician, I can feel you do that. I've seen a lot of these in scene, I say, because I've, I like watching sometimes the videos of a new song when an artist creates a video. Yes. And I've seen the song, uh, yeah, and, you know, I know what you're talking about, but what I want to catch into right now maybe is you guys perform with a lot of different artists. Yes. And record with a lot of different artists and that community that you're talking about building is happening. Yeah. 
but what I'm seeing, I'm, I feel that I often am looking at nature and when I'm looking at the nature of humans, I'm looking for authenticity. And when I'm seeing people smiling while they're singing, making music with you guys in your videos, it's authentic smiles. It's, it's the real stuff. And with Wake the Farm Up, we're looking to connect people to artists and musicians that are really doing this. We're not trying to like help support you staying in the mainstream music industry, spoon fed, whatever they want to do that are, you know, showing us videos of them smiling. But then they're giving us like people magazine showing us about how they're not smiling. And it's like, yeah, we all have ups and downs, but in those moments of that you guys are capturing, you're capturing them in those moments, not doing 10 sets or trying to record, yeah. try it all day long for one totally. song. It's so, yeah. yeah, so yeah, what, what Andy's referring to is that uh, both Wolfpack, I mean, Wolfpack actually really inspired this style of recording uh, for me. Jack Stratton, the band leader of Wolfpack, you guys know him, right? So Jack, Jack really led us on this path of capturing full takes where we would record live in the room and we would have the microphones capturing the sound in such a way that you could you can do whatever you want to the sound after you capture it. In other words, you could put a reverb on it, you could make it echoey, you could do whatever in the realm of quote audio production, but what you're doing is you're still getting a live performance. And this is the way that so many of our classic records that we all love were recorded because it's actually the only way you could record at the beginning of recorded music. So the first, you know, I don't know however many years of recorded music are just that, full stop. Like on a, I, somebody told me recently that on a Chuck Berry record, might have even been Johnny Be Good or one of these classic records, they had a guy in the studio whose job it was to pick the guitar amp up and move it closer to the one microphone that was in the room when it was time for the solo. So it's like, run, 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 run. So we are sort of keeping that tradition alive with um, capturing the performance. And it's not just a, you know, I don't know how press worthy that is. I mean, I think it is on some level, people are like, wow, that's the real shit, which is cool. But then the other level is that it also translates to like real feeling, you know? Right. So if, if you, if, because we now live in a technological environment where you don't actually have to record any music, you could just drag a drum loop in, it's perfect, it never speeds up or slows down and it sounds the same the whole time. And you could do that with every single instrument, record a vocal, tune the vocal, and now you've, you've basically created like AI, but as a human. And then take a picture while you're smiling after you just did like 48 hours of editing and you've only yeah. been drinking coffee and like, yeah, you, know, you exactly. haven't slept yet. So, so this sounds like I see people's faces being like, oh yeah, boo, right? But, but the thing is, and this is, this is all happening right now in real time as we, as we speak, the last couple months, when did, when did everybody hear about chat GPT? That was like a couple months ago, right? Yeah, yeah so, yeah, baby. <laughs> So, <laughs> so everybody's like kind of fascinated and also a little scared, but I think the, what we're going to see, my, my, my positive spin on it is that it's very quickly going to be the case that nobody has to do anything in order to make anything seem like it happened. And so we're going to get, because we're still humans, we're going to get pretty bored of the thing that's perfect. We've actually done studies on that and we can we can show that when a when a drum groove for example doesn't speed up or slow down but it just stays the same the whole time, it actually becomes fatiguing to the mind and people sort of fall asleep because because the brain is phenomenal at recognizing patterns. So even though you're not noticing that you were recognizing the exact sound sample happening again and again it it'll it'll sort of have a uh, droning kind of a almost becomes ambient music mm. so i think we're going to be doing that with like all everything we're going to be doing that with visual everything art video all this shit you guys have seen photos i'm sure you've seen the videos of like the ai paul mccartney singing a billy joel tune okay. and it like never actually happened and it's freaking pretty insane right Okay, so what is reality? 
I, I think what's going to happen is we're going to divide a line, basically starting now, because this is all happening now. We're going to be dividing a line in the sand where we go like, okay, computer-created non-reality is fine for things like telling us what time the show started. Like I have to Excel post spreadsheet. Can we get can we get a couple Excel Excel spreadsheets? We yeah. can come up here. We can show anybody people what from they Microsoft. Look. You guys have seen Excel sheets before. Right? I don't think any of these guys. <laughs> Not wrong crowd for Excel. Right, right, yeah. They are excelling though. I'll, exactly. I'll that. Excel yeah. getting chart, faster. Chart, chart that up. Exactly. So we have you know I on tour like an artist will have to post you know, let's say every day like the set times right, because. There's so much inefficiency still on the internet. And if AI can come and like look at my tour dates that I load into the system and post the set times for everybody every day, fine. Go for it, computer. Thank you. That's all in service of me coming directly and face to face with you, getting on a microphone and singing from my real human heart to yours. That that's what we're doing right now. That's what this is. That's what a festival is. So I think the premium on the live experience, the real human experience, whether it's a concert, comedy show, uh, dinners, gatherings of any kind like this in real physical space, that shit's about to get a lot more valuable. And I don't just mean financially, economically valuable. I mean like spiritually valuable because yeah. we're, we're hitting this weird curve where we're going to, for two seconds, everybody's going, wait. We can replace the whole human thing with this other thing. And it's like, yo, 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 uh, check this out. Like, no. one of my questions I've been asking Wooks, I've been asking people that have, like, yeah, yeah, it's giving up. Yeah, for that. All that right. was a rap for sure. What do, the, what do the Wooks have to say about this? Yeah, you Let's know, you, from you, the you're walking around talking to the Wooks, and, you know, a AI is definitely one of those Wook things, you know, conspiracy theories. There's definitely, like, Wooks out at night that are ready to, you know, we talked about this earlier, you know, to try to convince you the world's flat or this or that. I mean, like, whatever, dude, it's the back of a turtle. Wait, Come the on. world's not flat? Yeah. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. You know... I, I could, I mean, I could prove to you guys we did that you earlier. Did this, you already did, did this. Yeah, if you guys don't want know, it, though. if you want like the three sentence proof of how the Earth is flat, you can check out one of the episodes coming out here. Um, nice. But yeah, so what this, these books were talking to me about with the AI technology, you know, is like you know these these book like these AIs have been around alive since 2009, if you could say alive, right? Yeah. And you know, drawing these lines like. The, Ultimately, I was trying to look for the opposite of a cyborg. You know, I'm trying to create this story about opposite of a cyborg, and I haven't found a word here at the festival. Maybe you guys, if anybody knows exactly what that is, human. Well, a cyborg, oh, a cyborg, you know, defined, oh yeah, what's a cyborg? You know, as a human that has computer body parts, right? Oh. All right. So, what's a computer that has human body parts? Is there a name mm. for that? Facebook. No, I don't know. <laughs> All right, so like, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. That's so this is point. where I draw the line, right? With this, you know, I love AIs, you know, but it's really a thing to think about. You know, I'm a forward thinker. I like to try to think about what we're gonna be thinking about ahead of time, so I can think about it. <laughs> Amen. So, That's sufficient. I like that. So you know, you you, you got like. What's that musky guy? You know, he's like trying to push these like neuro implants. Some of you may have heard of this neuro implants, this concept, you know, and like all technologies, they start out like convincing us that it's okay because it's going to help with Alzheimer's disease or some other thing. But lo and behold, after years of research, they find the best time to drill a hole in the skull, the healthiest time to do that is when you're a baby and your skull is soft. Yeah, I mean, see, this is where this shit gets like totally off the rails. It's like, <laughs> you want to talk about diseases like Alzheimer's, there's also starting to be a lot of good information about there that if you actually just can try to eat as much whole natural food as possible, you don't get ridden with many of what we call Western diseases, which we used to call diseases of affluence or diseases of kings and queens because back in the day, 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 only the hyper wealthy could afford to eat processed foods in such high quantities that they would get diseases from it. And of course now we have manipulated our financial system and subsidized big agriculture to the point where it's actually cheaper to eat like the disease and get the disease of the kings and queens. Now, because this is a farm podcast, I felt safe saying that. Normally, I keep my oh, yeah. nice little yeah. mouth completely shut about that yeah, shit because it pisses people off too much. But 
So yeah. I want to uh, ask you some more about like what you were saying and connecting that into the farm stuff and the yes, um, please. Yeah, like you were t- speaking about how there's a more, I mean, I guess, authentic experience for. I, we were kind of speaking it of a way that felt like it was for audience members. Like we're not getting droned out by the repetitive nature of sound mm-hmm. when we're hearing. Um, uh, what did you call the kind of cut that you do? Like the, oh, like a like a repeated sample. Yeah, no, no. Uh, when yeah. when it's just a one time cut. I don't have oh yeah, like a, li- a live take. Yeah, live, live take. take. There we yeah. go. Thank you. So, um, but I wonder what that does for you. Like you yeah, know, that's a good question. and we and you even spoke. Andy spoke into uh, that process of like editing things over and over again and sitting there with coffee and doing that. And I'm like, what kind of person does that? Would that make you in the world when ah. you're when you're going through that process versus that's a good question. when you're somebody who takes it one time? Are you able to show up more authentically in the rest of your life? Ooh. I mean, in a word. Yes, absolutely, and uh, great, great train of thinking there. So, yeah, I mean, I'm guilty of editing myself to shit as well. I mean, we probably all have. That's what Photoshop can do. That's what other things, whatever. I mean, there's a place for these things. Like, if I, if I take a photo that has a that ends up having a huge light flare on it because the film got screwed up on the camera and it was the last photo and it was the right shot and and the press deadline is tomorrow then I'm glad that Photoshop can remove the the streak, yep. right? That would be maybe you could consider that a responsible use of Photoshop. But the thing- I, think, I think another responsible use, like the other day, I was using one of the golf carts here and somebody had put like a corporate coffee cup in the cup holder when they arrived here, you know? And yeah. it was still there late. I, you know, somebody was about to take my picture by the golf cart. I was like, can we remove the corporate logo out of the picture, please? Hey. Nice. I just felt, you know, it was like, yeah, totally. I'm the kind of person that will try to call that out. Because they're trying to advertise to us in the craziest ways. I saw that in the 90s when uh, I was walking through the forest and I saw McFun or something in the middle of the forest yeah. on the floor. I'm like, why would you have to advertise me? I was just out here. Tough. And then totally. I just trip over a box that says natural light. I'm like, what's yeah. going on here? I know. And, and – Thank God that the human body is able to withstand the amount of natural light that I that I drank as a teenager, because uh, it's been a while since since I had that. But <laughs> yeah, but totally, man. The uh, the the answer to uh, like as far as I feel it when I'm recording music is that if I am if the goal is for me to show up more authentically in the world, then I need to let myself be seen, and that's vulnerability. Mm. So we all we all kind of either we know or we've heard many times that vulnerability is important in this life and I mean you know that requires trust from your community but you want to be fully seen for me I realized at some point that my goal is to be an empowered happy healthy strong loving human being that is my actual goal and if I'm going to walk to the, through the world in an empowered, because above all else, I care about human empowerment. I realize that's the through line for me. Yes. I just care about empowerment. So if you play in my band and you're the best guitar player in the world, and I love playing with you, and it's the most incredible thing that's ever happened to me in my life, but then you tell me that actually playing in my band doesn't feel empowering to you because you need to quit and go become a coder, and moved to Europe. This is a true story, by the way. This happened to my hey. friend Tom. And bless his heart, hell yeah, Tom, go do that, chase that oh, dream. Right. Because I want empowerment, right? So I'll just cap this off by saying, if the goal is to be empowered, then I need to show myself in, in my authenticity. If I wanna feel confident showing up in the world as I actually am, then I need to let everybody know who and what I actually am. So now if we record my music and I do 48 vocal takes and I pick the best word from each take so that I can essentially pretend to you that I'm better than I actually am, then you will think I'm great. And everybody may think I'm great, but the sad irony is the only person who will think I'm not great is fucking me. Hey. Right. So it's really ain't about you guys. It's about me in the sense of I'm recording that way because I'm trying to I'm trying to show up in my power and so I recommend everybody record themselves if you're a musician like 
do do a full live take, see what happens. You're probably 98% of the way there. Because for that last 2%, I have to ask, like, is it worth it? And you know what? If you if somebody's about to give you $100,000 to do a commercial for Target that needs to be completely auto-tuned and, and, you know, you need to feed your children or... You, then Get do it. it. Yeah, but, well, that's, yeah, the, <laughs> put it in my I, pocket. I, but back I, I pocket was it, not tuned. I, I would do that, but I would edit the logo for Target yeah. out. Yeah, totally. <laughs> I think we could safe to say that Target's going to have a hard time getting anybody in this room to do the gig that I just described. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to all remove the logo. But, but my point is, and I hope it's clear enough, that if the goal is empowerment, then you have to let yourself be seen in your authenticity. And so you have to be very careful with these modern tools that let you effectively lie to everybody else. And again, if your goal is to make more money, maybe you will. I don't know. But I have to say, every single time I have watched an artist follow the authentic path, it has led to Wolfpack or my music or i mean i could just list the list goes on like the more sort of quote successful acts that i know are all people who are following their most authentic expression lewis cole uh you know i mean even kendrick lamar like what is that i mean that to me is like that's not even people can't even handle that shit that shit's so real mm. okay and it's successful so I don't buy the like you need to water your shit down in order to to get everybody to drink it. I I don't buy that at all. I think that especially with where we're going in AI, like best of luck competing with an actual robot. Yeah. It ain't gonna happen. We're gonna lose that battle. So I'd rather just yeah, like so, lose so, it from the get go and stay human with what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah same. Same. Mark. Word. Wake the farm up. Wake the farm up. Wake the farm up. Theo <laughs> Farm. But every anybody can do this. That's yeah. the beautiful thing. This isn't about me being like, yeah, I'm a tough guy. Me versus AI. Yeah, it's I not kind of no. Right. No. Well, it it's seems like... like what you're really getting into and what you're really saying is that this is a this is just you. Like this is a yes. full expression of you. You are an artist because you are an artist. But you're living this whole life. And we were talking. You were just starting to get into that, talking about the way that you eat. And I know I've done a little bit of cold plunging. Nothing to the extent that you've done, yeah, yeah. but like cold plunging. All this sort of stuff demonstrates that you are like a genuine person who. Is showing up in your authenticity as an artist. So and so sharing the, about it. And sharing about it. And just I love the the holistic approach to a lifestyle. Well, yeah, that's a great way of saying it. Life is holistic. Sorry. It you know, we have we the, the modern environment has made it has made it sort of like seductively specialized. We feel like we have this materialist approach to everything where it's like well, I st and by the way, I'm not knocking this. We've this is inevitable. Of course, we have people who just study the brain. Of course, you have people who just study the heart. Of course, you have people who just study the feet, etc. Whatever it is, but it's like, of course, this is all one system. Life is holistic. I would even go as far as saying everything coming through your eyes and ears right now, this entire perceptive field, that's just you. You know, so if you don't start with you, how do you expect this thing to look any different? So if all that's coming at you is negativity or, you know, v victimization, I just, I'm never getting it. It's never working for me. It's never working for me. Everyone is an asshole. Really? Everyone is an asshole? So that's going to become a part of your whole. Like you're exactly. kind of saying it's like everything is holistic, okay. whether or not we're living in, in alignment with our true authenticity, with positivity or that. Like yes. whether you're living a negative or positive, whether you're presenting a framework, negative or positive, that's going to be your whole experience. Exactly. So, and it translates to everything. And I mean, we have to give, we have to have grace for ourselves and patience because it's almost impossible, for example, to be in an airport and eat a piece of real food. Have you noticed this? Mm. Almost impossible. Yeah, one time I got back from Australia. On the flight, they gave me an orange. I was like... You're like, yeah, great, right. Great. So <laughs> I, I put it in my pocket. It's a great travel fruit, you know? I was like, I didn't really feel like eating an orange right that second. I get off the plane in California. A dog comes up, sniffs me. I get pulled over, and I'm like <laughs> having to hang out for like three hours because they gave me an orange, and I had it in my pocket. They didn't even take the six <laughs> ounce of mushrooms that you had in your pocket. <laughs> they took yeah. the orange, I man. Just, I just, you know, it's a good thing, you know, being a botanist and a mycologist and doing that kind of yeah. work. I just told him that was one of my field collections, you know, from one of my projects. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just kept yeah. rolling.
It's that's a great story, man. It's told difficult. Me to have a good trip and sent me on my way eventually. Without the orange, sans orange. Just right. Yeah. It's hard. Yeah, it's hard to. So we have to have some grace for ourselves because you, it's not about being perfect. You know, we have sometimes you got to eat a bag of potato chips or whatever because there's nothing else to eat. And this is not also about being judgmental towards anyone and their choices. It's just about, to me, it's about saying like, what can you do? Acknowledging that you as the individual, it must start with you. You can, to say, what can I do to empower myself towards, you know, actually not even towards anything. Start now, you know? What can I do now to empower myself in each moment? And it's possible. It's not that life isn't going to be very difficult because it's going to be excruciatingly difficult and painful. But there are, you know, there are practices that can help bring us into that grounded alignment that we started talking about. And one of them is the actual ground. Another one is the food you're putting into your body. There we go. Another one is, you know, I do, I do find, you know, the cold water exposure has changed my life. Absolutely. No question. More, pro- as much as anything, if not more than anything else, because... It really connected me to the the inherent power of my body and also taught me how to surrender and be soft as a man, which I think is a challenge for for a lot of for a lot of men in this world um in particular I'm only speaking as a man because i because that's what I am but um that that helped me really really touch into into surrender in a way that i I was not not able to before that, and that's opened a lot of doors for me in my life spiritually. So, I mean, yeah, yeah these things same. also, I realize, yeah, thank you. Yeah, wait to farm up. I'm finally starting to be proud of myself because I'm finally starting to do the shit that I always wanted to do, but it's all in service of showing up as a real person that can look you in the eye and accept myself. That's the only way I can do this work on these big stages because... It's kind of absurd, you know? Theo, I, I have a question just right in that spot. Go ahead. You're getting to do what you want to do. Yes. How long did you have to paddle upstream in and, and crazy thunderous weather to get into the flow where you're like, yeah, this is where I want to flow. Like, you're a flower now. You're flowing. I feel like it took me until a year ago. Okay. Are like you telling me you're life. done? I feel like this is a continuous process, right? Like it's yeah, like oh, where yeah. you are in the I'm, continuum. Uh, I'm not really I'm not even flow, No, I'm he's not really I'm not done at all. I feel like I I feel like I've finally made it to the beginning in other words. Hands on the yes. oar. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I love that. So, respect for everybody in the process. Joy, bless your process. There's no there's nowhere that you are that you are not meant mm. to be. You are where you are. So, whether you're meant to be or not, I think we spend too much time tripping about that. It'd be like is there a grand design or not? It's like, hold on, hold on. Are you stuck right now? Forget the conversation. Let's yes. do it now. What do we do now? What's the next step now? If you need to get an ice bath, great. If there's one there, fine. Yeah. If there isn't because you're in the middle of Peoria and it's 98 degrees out, forget the ice bath. It's okay. We don't got to do that right now. What can yeah, when, we do when, now? When the moment's there and it doesn't just feel right, you know, you got to move. You got to say, what's next? Like, yeah. choose, like, something here because, you know, I want to get back in that present moment where I'm presently feeling good and I'm in that flow. Yeah, that's all there is. Uh, it's That's the only thing there is is the present moment. So it's not that we can't, you know, we have to tangle with the future. We have to make plans. We have to imagine things. That's what makes us human. So, you know, I'm not knocking any of that, but I, I guess I feel like if there's one message, it's like it all starts with you. And I just believe in everybody, man. I really do believe. Do I, I don't believe that everyone can become the top billboard, top chart person. That, you know, I won't be that either. It doesn't matter. But I know you can be the most empowered version of yourself. Right. That's Redefining just fact. the goal. Redefine. That's a fact. And if that becomes the goal, then you, you have a chance at doing that and flowing with it such that you actually will sort of have, quote, success as a result, and you won't even notice it because you'll be, like, so happy that you're doing what you're doing. And then it's like, oh, shit, look, the show sold out. It's like, oh, cool, amazing. Now, by the, but that one's tough because when it doesn't sell out, you're like, fuck. Tough. <laughs> but, yeah, redefi- I mean, redefining the goal of success, redefining that to be more of an internal thing than an external well, like, count. It has like, to be. You can look at it almost externally, but feel it internally. Like there's a word in ecology called succession. That's when grass turns into a forest. You know, if you leave it 
to grow and heal on its own, it'll eventually turn into a forest. If you go in there and start interacting with it, maybe carry some seeds from another forest, get that forest started a little faster, you can make the times of sand go a little different speed. Wild, man. Yeah. Yeah, that's wild. <laughs> Put that internally in that all that context. Totally. Okay, that, that whole wild man comment right there got to bring me back because you've been talking about cold plunging. And, yes. You know, Andy's... This is just a trip for me. Andy's brother puts on a whole men's group called Wild Man. And one of our buddies, Rob Lenfessy, who down was on the... Asheville, North Carolina. Yeah, down cool. in that... Uh, cool. um, so check out the Mandala Springs episode of Wake the Farm Up. Is that? But he was trained by Wim Hof. Amazing. Yeah. Straight, yeah, Wim. Straight source, Rob. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't aware of that. Uh-huh. So that, like, I, I love when I go to Asheville. I mean, like, I'm, I'm, a, I'm like kind of uh i'm ashamed to say i'm like i go to the sauna house i'm not like out in the wa- like out in the <laughs> that's okay <laughs> the uh, river no you can but do those it. cold plunges like i'm interested in like i mean that uh, that uh practice really does bring you into the present moment like nothing else go. like your nervous system is you just, just like it. firing off i'm yes. wondering what what brought you into the cold waters well i saw my friend um a couple a couple years ago, I, it was during the pandemic. On my road trip back to Michigan, I stopped in uh, in Santa Fe, New Mexico, to hang out with some friends, and we all, you know, went for a hike in a mountain zone in Santa Fe. And it was March, so it was cold, and there was a lake. And somebody's like, "We should jump in," you know. And it's like, "Okay," so we all just like jumped in. Everybody got naked, jumped in for two seconds, jumped out. We're like, ah, it's crazy. And then we just having a conversation, you know, because you get kind of hyped up after you get a little bit of cold jolt. You're like, wow, I feel all energized. Surprise, there's a reason. It's Better science. Than a shot of espresso. I mean, yeah, I like yeah. those too, don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah. So we're all kind of giggling and laughing and being like, wow, that was crazy. And a couple minutes later, I'm like, where's Justin? And I look over and Justin's just still in the lake and he's just like, he just in there completely peaceful Justin. and i don't know what to say it just was it was so it just rocked me to my core it was like that's not possible because i can feel how my nervous system is freaking out and his is not it was completely unforgeable like that guy was there's no way to fake that you know um authentic, so man. That's authentic so moments. i asked him about it and it turns out he had just come back from poland with whim he had uh, done that that retreat, and Justin happens to also be the person who got me into meditation years prior. So he's he's a just a deep guy who I I respect and look up to. And I asked him what was up with. The, I said, "What's the deal with the cold?" Because I he, you know <laughs> give me it in one sentence, and he's like, "Well, of all the modalities that I've tried to get into the present moment, this gets me there the quickest." And so I was like, well, that's no bullshit. Right. And it just called to me. And then I found myself in Michigan with cold water, and I started experimenting with it. And then I did Wim's online course, which was a 10-week course. I think it was 300 bucks. So I thought, you know, that's, that's a worthwhile investment. And within a week, I was just crying on my floor because I just did twice the amount of push-ups I could ever have done, and I did it without breathing. Within a That's week. Awesome. As a Wait, yogi, I love that. I do a lot of push-ups. I love it. What do you mean you did push-ups without breathing? I mean that like the way Wim teaches the, the breath work and the cold exposure is a thing in tandem. And the way that the breath work changes your body and your ability to uh, reduce carbon dioxide, increase pH uh, of your blood, and also increase white blood cell count, increase oxygen in the blood, you're able to do like way more physical exercise than than you could yeah. before doing the technique. So basically I was the proof was in the pudding, you know, my my results were staggering to me and then I just started doing it every day like and and even the days, you know, I've been on tour the last couple months with my solo project. It's very difficult to get an ice bath. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Can we, is that ice cart coming around? Can we get like Let's do 800 it. bags of <laughs> ice in a it. large tub for us all to jump in? That. But you can start with a cold shower. I know, and you know, here's the thing with all this stuff. We talk about these modalities and I sense sometimes, not here, but sometimes people go like, oh, this thing again? 
because they keep hearing about it. It's getting popular. But the thing is, it's popular because it works. And so from my perspective, if the most grounding, empowering, presence-inducing modality that I've ever found in my entire life by a mile, if that modality is free and all it requires me to do is learn the breath technique and take a cold shower, hey. I'm fucking doing it, man. Right. It's free. Now, going to Europe and going on a retreat with Wim, that was not free, and I'm very privileged that I was able to, to pay for that. Yep. But you don't have to do that. You can start with a 30-second cold shower at the, end of your, at the end of your hot shower and just see how it feels. Um, there's a lot of free resources for the Wim Hof Method online. And I met Wim, you know, I've hung out with Wim a number of times now, and he is, I can tell you, he's, he's, not, he's not a bullshitter. He's, he just cares about, about empowerment as well. So yes. to me, you know, this is something that's become a big part of my life. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely going to pursue uh, learning more about it. I hope to get certified in the method and be able to figure out a way to teach people myself. Love it. Maybe I could do some kind of music food, vocal coaching, retreats, yes. all the whole thing. I don't really know how to put it all together yet. Hey, but we can work on I, I believe in you guys. Maintain I believe ground. in everybody, Let's Maintain man. ground here. It could be like the coldest <laughs> concert ever, perhaps. Yes, and I yeah. loved it. And you recorded you recorded a whole song in the water. Yeah. So I actually really want, like, this topic is super fascinating, and I'd love to stay on it for longer. Sure. However, you have spoken about this a bit on other podcasts, and yes. I want to offer the people a little something that you maybe haven't spoken okay. about so much. Okay, let's do it. So we're Gosh. talking about... You spoke to us a little backstage about your the food that you put into your body. Yeah, so um, I mean, just because it's a farm podcast, I'll tell you, and I and I and I, I try to avoid talking about this because I think a lot of times people feel judged. But I I spent thirty years of my life eating meat three meals a day, so please no judgment when I say that I'm a whole food plant based vegan eater now. And uh, yeah, personal yeah, thing for me. Yeah, farm up. But uh, it's no judgment. It's uh, it was a health thing for me. My mom was diagnosed with heart disease a few years ago, and uh, this was a couple years after my father died, and I just was like really worried about you know losing my mom, and so I did all the research I could, found out that it is actually possible uh, to reverse heart disease by eating a whole food plant based diet. How possible is it? I'm pretty sure that the actual science bears out to be that it is. 99.5% effective or some shit like that. So pretty fucking good. Mm. Pardon the French again, but I care about this topic. So my mom, uh, I did this diet to support my mom mm. and she did it too. And she was able to completely reverse her heart disease condition. Yeah, well, yeah. Amazing. She's yeah. She's in Amazing. great health. Yes. And uh, so, you know, I did it as well. Um, I don't. I don't mean to sound like. I hope these don't come off as vanity metrics. But within two weeks of uh, going whole food plant based, I lost 15 pounds, dropped two pant sizes, have not changed at all. I wear the same clothes now; they still fit me. Um, and I'm not talking about weight as a metric of of anything other than like that was something that was true for me. Uh, also, I found my uh, ability to maintain happiness and not fall into depression was much 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 better Bam. i had more energy um and i basically felt like high for two weeks which was cool that that does way off wear off <laughs> but uh now now i just feel i yeah it just was a big part of my life and not something i get to share about often because unfortunately the Wait, food conversation is very um controversial for people we are the only yes. species of animal that has absolutely no clue what its diet is which is hilarious and well, sad I think it's incredible one of the long time running jokes i have has to do with sheep and wolves you know you know and i know wolf pack kind of comes from some kind of wolf pack kind of there we concept, go right yeah and, sheep uh, and wolves baby like like all my life my mom always said you know you gotta be careful for a sheep and wolf's clothing but you know what <laughs> I always made the joke back to her about, yeah, well, watch out. We're going to have some sheep and wolf's clothing, you know? Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. And it's like to find Wolves out and that sheep's you're, clothing, you mean? you're not carnivorous. <laughs> like, that's fascinating. I mean, I wore my coyote teeth here, too, you know, just for yeah, you yeah. Right here, you know? I just wanted to share that. Well, I love um, animals. I love animals, and I respect, I do respect hunters, and I respect that everybody's on their journey. And I, like I said, I ate, I ate meat three meals a day for 
like almost my entire life. So it's not a judgment. Yeah. It's something that works for me, but it is something that I do want to share. You can take your health uh, much, much more in your hands than maybe you realize if you are able to replace some amount of the animal products you eat with more plant products, whole natural foods, starches, right. rice, you know, tubers, that. potatoes, things like that, squashes. It doesn't all have to be fancy um, whole foods produce. That's something people get wrong too or they, they're misinformed about. They think that it's very expensive to be vegan, but the whole truth piece. is no. I, eat, I eat lentils and so much, man. You have no idea how much cheap whole natural organic starch you can get for dirt cheap pennies on the dollar. So, so I just wanted to share one little tongue twist I got here. So in my 20s, and it wasn't that long ago, I guess, but I had three years go by where I was only eating raw plant-based foods. I didn't have anything that was even cooked. Wow, yeah, Talk raw is intense. feeling like extreme changes, like the yeah. changes I was feeling in my connection in the ecosystem because I was foraging as well. So I'm like bringing in raw Amazing. material from the system I'm in. Yeah, and incredible. Simultaneously, my body's detoxing constantly. Like when you go through these things, sometimes you might have a moment where it feels painful, but there's all these puzzles and clues in nature. You know, we're decoding things, you know, we're yeah. finding things like we found aspirin in Willow originally when you have the whole food, you know, not yeah. talk about whole paycheck, but like the whole food being the real thing, you go out and get a sprig of Willow and you chew on the actual stick. You're getting straight medicine again. It's like yeah. it's like it's free. There's the IRS doesn't know you're taking medicine for your pain relief. You know you're not you're getting free aspirin. But there's other properties in the whole food too. It helps suppress your appetite. I say it helps because sometimes when your head hurts, that's when you want to suppress your appetite. You don't necessarily want to back your whole system up with a bunch of food. You want to kind of fast, drink water until your detox is done. Our heads heat up for a reason to clear things out and move things along, not to be, you know, like subdued yeah. and forgotten about. Yeah. So well, see, we one one of the biggest things though that I think was funny after three years of raw food life was I didn't get poison ivy ever again. Wow, that's yeah, I, cool. I integrated with the ecosystem. Amazing. That much. It's like it's like yeah. you're cool here. Come on in. That's so cool, man. Well, this is this is all knowledge that has been lost over the hundreds of whatever thousands of years of colonization and mayhem that we've all experienced that we're all a product of. So, a lot of our ancestral knowledge that that we we of course have in there that that we learned from being in nature, we're sort of having to start finding again and and remembering. And so, you know, the goal here, I mean, we are we are a pack animal. We're a we're a communal animal, and we're made up of individuals. And each one of us has has the ability. It's not easy. It's not the thing that's on the counter. You know what I mean? It's not the thing that's scrolling through the the Instagram necessarily. You have to work a little bit for it, but you can become self-sovereign with your mental health, your physical health, your financial health, your wealth, whatever you want to call it, your money savings. There are there are tools and practices to become more self-sustaining so that you can show up better in your community. I mean, that's just yeah. as hard as it is. Like how many of us have heard that? Oh, you can't love someone else until you love yourself. Yep. That used to piss Real me tough. off, man. Yeah. I thought, fuck that. And then it was like, oh, wait, I don't love myself. Right. That's why I'm saying fuck right. that to that <laughs> completely irrefutable truth of yes. life. You know, so it's like, I th that's what... Uh, that's what that song, my friend, uh, I don't know how many of you have heard my newest album, but there's a song on there called Hit the Target. And my friend, uh, Woody Goss, actually, who plays in Wolfpack. Wait, wait, you're taking out a Target now? Like no, no, no Target, but Woody Goss came, uh, Woody Goss this morning, I was just at the hotel with Woody, and he was like, man, what is that song about? You know, and we started talking about it, and... I get, it feels relevant to share right now, but that song is really about stewarding all the stuff we're talking about into like, remember that you can focus. Remember that you can, you can, you can move through all these feelings of like despair, victimization, all the pain of modernity, all the pain of disconnection. That's all part of our story. That's our collective and individual stories. Everybody here is, no one is exempt from this but we're still a community. We're still a one 
animal. We're the human species, and we can steward all that shit, focus it, and hit the target of our own empowerment. That's what that song awesome. is about. Love it. I love talking about this. So I, the, the podcast listeners probably already know, but some of y'all don't know about that I gave up uh, eating food from grocery stores uh, January 1st of this year. Wow, so, how's that been? Uh, it's been great. So that's Amazing. why like, I was curious about, because there's like, you know, it's really fascinating to talk to other people who have done radical things with food and like yeah. how it impacts your internal system. So I get all my food from farmers markets, foraging and food that I grow and garden or people grow in their gardens and share Amazing. with me. Thanks, homie. That's but, the um, <laughs> Way to go. I love that. The but like for me, you know, just to be real transparent, overly transparent, I guess. Like, yeah, mental health for me was a huge struggle Same. for a long time in my Same. early 20s and stuff like that. And it, like, it had to be a multi-pronged approach. I couldn't just address the way that I ate. Sure. I had same. to also do things that impacted my nervous system. Like for me, cold plunges are great, but the thing that I really get into is yoga and Amen. the breath work there. And yes. you know, it has to be all the, and and connecting to music even like singing, which is like a vagal nerve stimul, you know, all these things. But the way that um eating like predominantly local food and eating as you said foods that are charged by the earth that are real medicines and all that has impacted me internally has been really profound. It's great. And it's awesome. I love to hear, I mean, I've spent uh, not as long as you all as being vegan. I was vegan for like 10 months in my teenage years and stuff, but like, and, and I love a lot of, uh, a lot of vegans and how they come to that. And I know that they want to like really take care of themselves, but it can be really frustrating. That can be like a group of people who often can get really rigid. Yeah, I mean, I that's why I don't talk about it a lot because people right. put a lot of assumptions on you. I mean, I used to for my thirtieth birthday, I fried chicken for fifty people, five zero, <laughs> uh, seven chickens, broke them down myself. I used to work in restaurants. I have knife skills. I love culinary, everything. So you kind of have to give that up a lot in terms of the people found out I was vegan. They sort of put me in the like Theo doesn't like food anymore category. Right. But I like to say, hey, don't be fooled. I'm still Jenny from the block oh. over here. <laughs> okay, but uh, yeah, this is there's, there's some really good vegan foods. I mean, one amazing. Of the, oh yeah, ones I mean, that are our favorite to talk about around here are mushrooms. Like, yes, which As a vegan you like crushing mushrooms. I do, you? and actually, I the place I live now, I'm I've I'm able to forage, and uh, right now Where? is uh, la I mean, last week I was able to get spring onions, but mushroom wise, there's morels, there's uh, oysters right now, there will be chanterelles in in uh, the summer. I can. I've gotten chaga, oyster, chanterelle, chicken of the woods, hedgehog, um, morels, lion's mane, all, all from uh, the property where I live. Wake so, the farm up. Yeah. I, yeah. Know, I know one you probably found too is like some turkey tail. Did you oh, say yeah, turkey tail? I didn't, but that's there oh, too. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I, lo I love mushrooms. I love mushrooms yeah. so much. I've gotten kind of obsessed with them. They're they're. Foraging for mushrooms is a really beautiful, and people tend to be like, oh, great, wait, wait are you sure? It's very, there's, right. you gotta be careful. And I'm like, it's sort of like the equivalent of somebody where like, didn't know what a banana was, and you were about to eat one. And they'd be like, are you sure that's not poisonous? You'd right. be like, I don't know how to tell you this. <laughs> I'm sure this is a banana. Yes. So with foraging for mushrooms, you're not just going around picking anything up and eating it. Right. Absolutely not. You, you're going for a specific... Uh, kind of mushroom that has to that you know is likely to be uh, in the area you are because you know the area and you know the conditions you know the season the temperature and the weather so and you know where they grow so just to be clear it's and foraging you're in community is, with foragers I'm sure yeah. that you t took some plant walks totally totally <laughs> I also got a homie with uh, who's who grew up doing this who who lives in Nashville now but he's a deep Michigan mushroom guy so I just text him pictures but now it's like my 14th picture of an oyster is like. Yes, bro. That's an oyster. Trust yourself. So yeah, <laughs> they the oysters do kind of look different depending on the humidity, the temperatures. No doubt. So, yeah. You also got to be aware of what potential poisonous lookalikes there are in the area. And for oysters, for for pearl oysters, there there aren't any that you know that I know. I mean, of. honestly, you could look at the list of poisonous mushrooms throughout the whole entire planet. Spend a little time learning those. There's not that many of those. There's a lot more that are 
edible. I want to come back to that yeah, word. Let's do it. And, right. You know, then there's yeah. a lot, ton. There, most of them are medicinal. You know, that kind of crushes the threshold between edible and medicinal. There. Um, no doubt. But yeah, just on the yeah. Like, did you have another mushroom piece? Oh no, just well, I just want to say like I really, I really want to hope. I hope I stick the landing on like there's no judgment here about how anybody is eating. Everyone's on their own journey with this, yes. and I need to be clear about that. That you know, you will come to wherever you come to in your own time, and I just want to share resources. Like if if anybody is struggling with any health condition, um, it it is the case that that you know plant foods are are quite helpful for so many things just from reducing inflammation standpoint the Wim Hof method is re- is incredible at reducing inflammation in so the body yeah earlier we were talking about these neuro implants right you know like I didn't get all the way into what like you know could potentially happen in the future you know where the AIs want unused uh that's sick to say it like that. They they have uh, unwanted babies that are not allowed to be, you know, like the, all, the whole scenario of stuff there. Yeah. But, you know, eventually AIs have generated enough income from like cryptocurrency and stuff without actually existing in the real world that they start lobbying to try to make it so they can have these little bodies that are soft that they can enter into so they can wow. feel the sensual experience that we all get to experience. They jones for it. This is like a. This is like. Did we just get Andy's uh, sci-fi future movie plot? Is that what we yeah, just that's, got? Yeah, that's why like, I'm trying to get the right word for the opposite of a cyborg, man. Oh yeah. <laughs> Dang, I don't There's know. We're gonna come rights. back to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I got some people in Hollywood. I'll talk to after this podcast is there over. There we go. Be like, my buddy's trying to do a reverse cyborg future AI crypto project. We need a name. Is there one yet? If not, you know, maybe we gotta come up. We'll come up with one. You know. It'll yeah. It's coming. Amen. Love it. Well, I definitely, I think that it, like, it shines through you. Your approach to life, the, these different practices that you're taking are definitely shining through. Like, I've seen it in, you know, videos with you and podcasts with you and stuff. And it's really great to be able to talk to you in person and definitely feel it. I think awesome. people out here feel it. Yeah. Thanks, you guys. Yeah. My main, right. me- my main message is that you can do it. You can do the empowerment thing, whatever that is. And I, I wish, I mean, I, yeah, people have, people have told me that, and, I, and I, I'm starting to believe it. There, there's so much power in each of us, and so it's all about finding the modalities that work for you to really access that and take that responsibility in yourself to say, like, I'm going to take the first step towards you know, empowered joy. It doesn't have to be kitschy and corny and you don't have to have a postcard that says, I'm so happy, oh my God, I can't stand it. Sometimes people get turned off by that. But the point is, the empowerment is available to each of us. Yeah, you guys Thank want you. that, right? Wake the farm up. Come Wake on. the farm up. Let's empower each other. Let's empower each other. Let's empower each other. Yes. Support and encouragement. Hope's Day preppers here, you know, a lot of times in permaculture and cultivating, you know, our minds. I come across every doomsday scenario that there might have come at me, you know, and that's why I keep coming up with new ones. I'm like looking ahead, like, okay, they haven't thought of that one yet. But, <laughs> but anyway, Hope Stay Preppers, what we're all about here on Wake the Farm Up. It's beautiful. Thank you so much for being with us. Thanks for having me, guys. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for coming. See you, you all at Wolfpack tonight. 830. Right. Yeah, 830 at the Sunshine Stage. And on a count of three, can we get a Wake the Farm Up? One, two, three. Wake the farm up! Yeah! Yo! What do you think of that show? Please leave a review. Let us know. Check it out. We got more cool shows coming soon. Subscribe. So much gratitude for Theo Katzman for coming on the show and sharing with us. Thanks to Chelsea Coy once again. We mentioned her in the show. She's one of our friends that helped bring us together. That's how we're maintaining ground here, you know. Keep it up. Build each other up. You know, much love. Have fun at summer camp.
We love waking the farm up. 